Hey everyone, it's Coach Johnson, and in this video, we're going to do another edition of Thrower Problems. Uh, we are going to review, um, well, let me take it back. First question, or a couple questions submitted by our subscribers and members was uh, asking about sector fouls and jumping at the finish. So one of the things we want to focus on is looking at the reason. So I thought... Um, We'd look at a video submitted by one of our online members, Coach Mayer from Northern California. And here, obviously, video on the left is one of his younger throwers. And you can see um, one of the big reasons that four sector fouls is the right foot coming off the ground before the hips are facing into the sector. So pretty obvious now. And here we'll do a comparison and we'll look at uh, Jason Harrell. He's uh, in 2016, fourth at the Olympic trials and ranked top five in the United States. Um, and you'll see in this video, as we start to look um, here, here's the sector. And then you can see his right hip, uh, left foot. So his left foot, left hips probably facing here and his right hip is facing and coming around. So it's really pulling and allowing him to pull into the sector. Whereas you have this young athlete, he's facing, everything is facing this way, and the sector is over here, right? So big, big difference. Um, so this is one of the common things that to understand that simply wherever the right foot or the delivery side foot comes off the ground, wherever the hips are facing at that point is typically where the discus or shot put in a rotational throw is going to go. So <clears throat> now let's look at back to the start. And if we're looking at the throwing chain reaction, what we're looking at is where um, the throw begins. So as we set up here, you're going to notice that Jason has tension between from the lower body through the uh, upper body. So you see tension on the discus, whereas you'll see this thrower, when he starts to go, there's a there's a disconnect. And there's some tension in the arm shoulder, but there's not a lot of tension between the upper body and lower body. So how you're going to be able to look at that is this is his pillar one and his pillar two. The key thing for throwers is to keep the knees apart as you come in. The hips start to fall, and you can see this kind of narrow path. And look at that his sweep leg isn't really sweeping it's kind of like a pendulum and then it's this last second turning of the foot which is resulting in this big significant bend of the waist and really the goal is the center of mass has to be here and you would want to see the knee sticking out here instead you've got this line and if we look at Jason, as he comes into this, you're going to see what I'm talking about. The line from here to here is pretty straight. Um, he needs a little bit more bend, and obviously he's still working on becoming a better thrower himself, but you can see the general, the alignment, and you will look at the position of the shoulders and the hips. And so you're going to see that, that tension and crisscross, and you see the whole body is on this angle line. Whereas this athlete, again, really has this angle line. And that's killing his rotation into the center of the throw. Now, one of the things we refer to this as pillar three, the load, pillar four, pillar five, pillar six. So if you look at Jason, pillar two, three, four, five, six, right? More continuous. Um, hips really come into the throw you can see the contact and he still continues to push that hip around into the direction of the sector whereas here really looking at the difference in the sprint now jason needs to open that arm a little bit more and there's some other things on his throw but looking in comparison you can see how the upper body pitches here and everything's straight and you can at least see how everything here jason has everything moving into the throw um, <clears throat> so what happens is when you get this bend at the waist, the core thing that's going to happen is that there's a shift. There's too much movement. There's not enough rotation. It's going to be very difficult to stay on top of the right, which we refer to as uh, pillar five. That's the power position. So he can't lock anything back or down. So as he shifts, an athlete is going to react because the discus is catching up to the hip. And then he's going to jump to try to maintain stretch on the discus. So the right foot comes off the ground, sector hips are facing here, and the jump allows them to kind of pull that discus around into the sector. 
And so <clears throat> if we don't land kind of on top, we create too much shift. That bend at the waist here is resulting in a shift back here. And then the athlete jumps. So jumping is typically a byproduct of too much shift and the athlete is reacting to the fact that they're losing separation and tension against the discus. So by jumping, they maintain as much separation as you can. You can see this athlete leaving the ground here and the hips are facing well outside the sector. So typically, in this case, this athlete pulled the discus into the sector and in many cases, this is going to be a sector foul. So they're interconnected, whereas you can see where Jason keeps very continuous and he can pull around into the throw and everything goes out. And again, when you look at the uh, shadow of the discus right there, you're gonna see that shadow going straight, pretty much down the middle of the sector. You can just see it, it goes on that line. Okay, <clears throat> so jumping and sector fouls have a result of how, the efficient, how efficiently the athlete is entering into the center of the ring in most cases, and this is why young throwers are going to jump. Upper body's catching up, getting ahead of the hips, and you can see they're facing here. And again, looking at when we, especially here, you can see while it appears this athlete has some separation, he lands with the foot closed, everything shifted, and that's why he goes up. And then, whereas Jason continues to pull around and pull into the throw, and you notice the whole right side pulling into the throw. So the quick fix for most of you is to do um, a lot of um, drill movements where they understand how to maintain separation <clears throat> of the upper body and lower body. So you move around and then get active with the, uh, the left arm instead of getting too active too early, creating too much shift. They got to learn how to stay on top, rotate around, and that's what's going to result in that jump. So again, simple. Don't look to uh, see the <clears throat> when you're looking at your throwers or if you're a thrower trying to get better and you sector foul a lot, you have to understand that you're going to have to learn how to stay on top of the right a little longer to be able to rotate the hips into the direction of the throw. If you're creating too much movement from the middle to the front before delivery occurs, you're going to wind up jumping or sector fouling quite often. So hopefully that was helpful and stay tuned, check out uh, our other videos and be sure to subscribe to our channel and check out our free videos at AirtayThrowsNation.com.